Okay, so I'm learning a little bit about these things. And again, this is a world that I'm not familiar with because I'm more of a John's Red Husqvarna type. But I ordered one of those generic eBay clutch drum kits. And the reason I liked the idea was because it had a spline where I can put, uh, you know, different the different rims. So I can go either 3 8 which I have on there, or, or you know, the smaller gauge, uh, the 325. But I struggled with it for a little bit. Number one, because the OEM has got this smaller bearing in this type of arrangement. Look at that, that's wore out beyond belief. But that smaller hole. So the bearing that came with the clutch kit was this one right here. So obviously what they've done is they've got a much larger diameter roll in the roller bearing in order to make up the distance in the larger inside diameter of that, uh, that clutch drum. They probably use that for different saws as well. And what I found was I couldn't put it on because this bearing was ever ever so slightly too long so I couldn't get the clip on there. So I lost a couple of those little clips and they went sailing across the garage. So I'm like, okay, what would you do, Farmer Jones? And I went up and put this on my big uh, cutoff wheel on the side. I figured I'd take just a little bit of distance off because it was just a little tiny bit. Put it back in there, right? That freaking cage is plastic. I'm going to put that in there. Junk. So I found another clutch bearing from the 660 that had a seal cage from Farmer Tech. I put that underneath the drum and it seems to work just fine. So, lesson number one is the aftermarket drum has a different inside diameter, much larger, so you can't use the OEM bearing. Number two the generic kit that I bought, let me see if there's a label on it somewhere. No. Just, it doesn't really say who, what, or where. No brand. While it's convenient that it has the spline so I can put the, the rims on there, um, the bearing was just basically useless. It's too long and it was a, it's junk anyway. But it may be a solution. I mean, for what I want to do, this might work fine because I can go back and forth between 325 and, and 3 8 you know? So this goes into the scrap pile. So my plan is I want to run the standard steel 310. Basically, all I did was I tightened up the bottom of the... You can see right in there, you can see the bottom half of the cylinder is a clamshell. And uh, tightened them up and it ran because it was sucking air bad. Now my hunch is that's a marginal solution at best. So in anticipation of interest, but also I think something of interest to people, is I went and bought, again, a generic, this is not a PharmaTech, this is a generic top in, but this is what a steel 310 is. This is something you need to know. This goes into the whole discussion between what a clamshell saw um, is versus, say, a conventional saw that has a split cases like you've seen me do with the 372s. Basically, both steel in Husqvarna have got a, their homeowner lines mainly clamshell and that means that the upper half of the bearing pocket and the cylinder is all one casting for manufacturing costs it's just cheaper to do it that way and then the 310 also has that open port design versus the loop ports or the closed port design so the 310 steel is pretty much in line with like a, a Husqvarna I don't know 45 something like that you know, where basically it's clamshell, although the Husky, I think, is a little more sophisticated on the design. So for a comparison, this would be from a 42 millimeter, I don't know, it'd be like a Husky, I don't know, probably a 
It's not a 350, it would be a, a 345 or 340. But basically it's the same kind of, of layout. See what I'm saying? You know, they basically have a, the same kind of a layout. This, this again would be a Husqvarna homeowner base saw, right? And the 310 I think is more of a farm saw. Now, if you remember my 350 series, the bottom half of the saw was just this big plastic, right? And on the Husky, this is one chunk of plastic. If you see the screws right down there, they run right into the bottom of the, of the cylinder. And this squeezes this top half of the bearing cap into the case. And on the Husky, the bottom half of the bearing cap and the seals is just this one piece. It's kind of simple. It works, you know what I'm saying? These things have worked for a long time, this is being a 350. On the steel, because I had to get around patents is my guess, is you have this big plastic housing, but then there's, I'm not sure the camera's going to pick it up, but if you look in here, you'll see that's actually aluminum. So what they've done is on the steel, instead of having the cylinder sit on the case, and the case being the bottom of the bearing cap holding the crankshaft, it's got a metal cap on the bottom which holds the crank and the seals together, which is pretty good. And then what they've done is they've pinned it with this, right here, they, they have it set inside the plastic case and they have it pinned with this bar stud that goes all the way through and grabs that. We're going to get into it. We're going to tear it apart so you can see. And again, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But they've got basically a similar performing saw with a much more complex design than that, that, that. Yeah, it's a beautiful day out here on the hillside. And I've got these two saws right here. I'm going to run. That one there is going to undergo some modifications and surgery at some point. But I figure it's only fair to give it a chance to show what it does as it came from the factory, kind of. This is the one where we had that terrible air leak. And then I just uh, tightened up the screws down there and it ran. And it's an all OEM steel MS310, of which I don't know much about. And this is that Farmer Tech or Holes Forma that came with a busted pull start. And I put one on from a kit. Now I've been running that for a little bit. It's been a little inconsistent with the carburation. Um, it looks like as it gets down towards the bottom of the tank, it starts drawing air, shutting itself off. We'll see if it displays that characteristic today. But now that one there is sort of a farmer homeowner style saw with the open ports and all that. And this is more of a pro style, even though it's a copy saw. It's more of a professional um, construction with the split cases and the closed port cylinder and all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is there's a tree down in here somewhere. It's dead. Doesn't have a top. And that'll give me something to cut down and something to give me cookies so I can compare one to the other because that's what everybody wants to know, right? So we're going to do a couple of things first. Let's just see if they start. And then if I can get them to start, we'll go down, take that half a tree down, and then we'll run some cookies and see if we can get a sense of the power of that aftermarket chainsaw versus the OEM homeowner saw. Shouldn't be totally fair, should be a no-brainer. The blue saw should have a lot more power. But we will see, won't we? So, first thing that I like to find out on any saw is, do they start? So that's what we're going to start with today.
мотор. I think I'm going to run the 310 and give it a chance and uh, see how it works. Yeah, as I'm getting older, I'm kind of a stickler for get, making sure my footing is, is correct. But I'll bring this down and get a little bit closer into the tree. And I'm pretty sure I know which way it's going to go.
clearly the 310 is not running quite as well as the MS361, the hose forma. But I still think I have an air leak in that saw, so it's not really fair. And the chain, yeah, I don't think it's anywhere near as, as nice as the one on the, the blue saw. So what I think I'm going to do is go up and get the uh, scrunch, swap over the bars, and then give the 310 a little bit more of a chance, you know, with a different chain. But neither one of them run like a 372. I'm going to take one more test cut with the blue saw, and then we'll swap it over. Two things you're going to see is whether or not it restarts quickly, which I believe it will. getting to be better and better as I, as I put more time on it. It still has sort of an inconsistent carburation deal going. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, one of the things I happen to like about all these steel base saws in the Husqvarna 372 and 390s, but also the 572, is how easy it is to get to the bar and chain in the field.
Well, it's running better now. And maybe just need a little run time. This picked up power a little bit now. You know, it's a nice saw. It's smooth. No powerhouse. And that's kind of a starting point for this saw. I think what we're going to do is put a different top end on it and see if we can make it run a little bit better. And my goal, if I can do it, is to get this OEM 310 with an aftermarket 390 top end to run as good as this saw right here. That would be the goal. Kind of a turnaround here, right? Usually you're trying to get aftermarket to run as good as OEM, but in this case we're going to try to get the OEM to run as good as the aftermarket. How's that? A little bit of a twist. So anyway, that's it for today. Basically got it running, the 310. The G366 is running better and better the more I have time on it. But it still is not right. I'm still not pleased with this as it is. It still has inconsistent carburation issues. And until I get that beat, I'm not going to be 100% pleased. It doesn't mean it can't cut wood. It cuts wood just fine. It's just not, uh, it doesn't run good in my definition of a good running saw. It runs good enough. You know what I'm saying? We have a little work to do with this saw. My hunch is more break-in time and maybe a different carburetor or different intake boot, pulse line, stuff like that might get this to come back around. My hunch is with these aftermarket carburetors is like the internal parts, the rubber parts, the diaphragms and things like that are not quite as good as the stock ones, the OEM uh, saws. You know, little things like that. And it's going to show up in the way it idles, restarts. Like this one here will start showing lean conditions when it gets down to about, you know, a quarter tank of gas, stuff like that, where the OEM saw will let you run the saw right out of gas before you start seeing that kind of behavior. Just little details, but not a bad running saw, don't get me wrong. Just not a great running saw. Not right yet. We have some work to do. I'm going to go see if I can catch a fish.